I'm Jeff Stormer, and I host Party of One, an actual play podcast focused on two-player role-playing experiences. Every week, I sit down with a friend. J.R. Goldberg. Alvaro, a.k.a. Wormtooth, formerly MC Blackwolf. Danny Costello. My name's Rich Howard. I'm Sharung Biswas. We play a two-player role-playing game. We share some laughs. An absolute blast to play. It was a delight to run my game with someone who got so into it. It was so easy to do. Seeing the creativity just blossom right in front of my eyes. Maybe a few tears. I've never had a game make me question my previously staunch moral compass. Jeff makes the greatest serial killer. And we have a really good time. The great way to take a chance on a new role-playing game. Truly exemplifies what is wonderful about a game with just two people driving the narrative together. You can find new episodes every Tuesday at partyofonepodcast.com. Hey people, this is Aram. Welcome back to God's Fall, a proud member of Neon Rival. Join the collective at neonrival.com. Episode 69, The God of the Astral Realm. When we last left our heroes, they had entered the city of Capania, the golden capital of Rizan. They were here in search of the arisen god of the astral realm, an old blind dwarf they had seen in visions peddling her wares in Capania's Grand Bazaar. Steelbeard transformed himself into a dock to conceal their approach, and Caitlin stayed behind to tend to a very hungover Torvik. The rest of the crew donned disguises, and Zion made himself invisible after finding a wanted poster with his face on it, offering a reward of 1,000 gold pieces for his capture. The city was swarming with Kadarian soldiers, but one group in particular caught the party's attention. It was led by an anti theot priest and Zion's eldest brother, Tallis. Doro attempted to use his Find the Path divinity to locate the Astral Realm's arisen god, but the glowing line spidered out and tracked back upon itself in ways the halfling had never seen before. When the players finally managed to track her down, they saw that the Kadarians had found her first. My name is Doug, and I play Doro Knot, the level 6 halfling rogue. My name is Kelly, and I play Rena Fallowell, a 6th level wild elf ranger. My name is Michael. I play Zion Preeton, a 6th level human sorcerer. My name is Carlos. I play Para Rivers, a 6th level human cleric. There's a guard there, and I point, there's a guard, there's a guard, there's a guard, and that guy's a guard. I don't see your brother. So is it a one flat building? So it's open on the top. It's just shelving all the way around, covered in pottery. You just can't quite see inside it. Is it like a tent? Is it like an outside tent that they're in? So there's wooden shelves in a rectangle forming a space. They were with an opening in the front. Hanging on these rectangles in the back are just simple drapes of cloaks to basically show off the plates sitting in front of them and behind them. So you can't quite see inside these stalls, but it's open on the top. It's just shelves put end to end Made to, a form a, to form a wall. Exactly. There are guards surrounding this stall. Two right at the entrance and then two kind of around in the back looking around. I want to touch the ground, see if she's, if I get a better signal. Let me try one thing real quick. It's going to be quiet. And I just kneel down and... Rena's trying to make, like, a uh, normal conversation so that we still look in. Like, I'm like, oh, this is a really good potato. She's holding a belt. <laughs> she can't, she did, she's not used to lying on the spot. <laughs> so, Doro, you kind of duck down in between all of them, place your hand on the ground, your eyes roll back pink and purple, and there's just a firing of energy that crackles along the ground. 
you see an old dwarf sitting cross-legged on the ground. There's four Kadarians around her. Two soldiers are just walking behind her, and their hands have now reached underneath her arms and are scooping her up off the ground. Her eyes open. They're rolling with the same pink and purple. She looks right at you, and she smiles, and you feel a bridge reach out to you. Ooh, so... And I wave, like <laughs> like a kid waves at somebody. Sure. And I do the be quiet finger to my pursed lips. She nods. And we connect. The second you connect the bridge, an old dwarf appears, like pop, right next to you, dusts off her cloak, kind of looks around. Like physically, like we can see it? Oh, yeah. <gasps> She's just there. She looks around you towards the stall, and she sees that the guard, there's some yelling. The two guards in, in front dive inside. Now all of them start to walk outside, and they're looking around. They're shouting orders. Other Kadarians, come with us now. Para quickly reaches in the bag and puts Rainbow Hat on her head to, like, disguise her. How tall is she? Four foot one and, like, maybe 145 pounds. Is there somewhere high up that would be... Like, oh, hidden from down on the ground? Yeah, there is. If you teleport everyone, it's going... I mean, there's no, people... not everyone. Me and her. I say, get to the docks, and I get us there. Yeah, we already made a plan. Okay, so the three of us are going to head back for the docks, watching Doro as he's pop-popping. Across rooftops. Yeah. Doro, I would like you to roll, uh, roll your divinity score. One. Doro, you appear back on the docks alone. So she's with them. So whatever. Okay. They both vanished and Doro appeared on the docks. Oh, oh she's she's a, she vanished too. So she popped somewhere else. We don't know that though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We think we're just going to head back for the docks as we're supposed to. Doro, you appear back on the docks and she's not with you. Whoops. Doro, you're back. Okay, good. What are we doing now? Um Where's everyone Honey, else? Uh, they... They're coming back. They're coming back right now. Oinkers comes a trotting out. Not now. Not now. Hey, I touch like noising I you and like, what's going on? <laughs> no, stop. I touch the ground again to see if I can find her. Oinkers touches the ground as well, like kind of mimics you. <laughs> well, she's not in Kadar's hands. Shrug. Cut to Kadar's hands. <laughs> 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 She, she's been teleported directly into an anti theot temple. <laughs> they were all doing a ritual, and she disappears in the center. That's weird. That's never happened before. I sit there and wait for everyone to come. Unless we're stopped, that's where we're headed. Winker sits down next to you. <laughs> and you guys see several Kadarian patrols running past you. Out of the way, out of the way, running through the crowds. Like five, six, seven patrols now are now converging in on that area. And you make it to your dock without much hassle, because everyone's occupied watching the soldiers. That was so easy, guys. We did it. We finally succeeded at something. We didn't even have to work that hard. Uh, hey, Dor- uh, Dora. Where is she? Uh, that tone of voice does not inspire confidence. Well, you see. Did you lose her? No, well, uh, lose? Uh, do you lose something when you accidentally drop it? You dropped her? I didn't drop her. She just went somewhere else. Do you know where? Winkers looks very disappointed. <laughs> Listen, pig, I don't need any of your sass. I don't know where she went. She's connected to the astral in a weird way. It, it doesn't work the same with us. <sighs> okay, fine. Everybody, stand around me. Oh, Zion's going to end all our lives. I know. This could go <laughs> terribly bad. <laughs> could we send oinkers? Does it, we could tell oinkers what she looks like, and she can turn into a bird, and she can fly over top. and Look for one old dwarf in the entire city? I know. Let's go into the shed here. You all pile into the shed. <laughs> Torvik is snoring so loudly now. Okay, everybody stay around me and guard me in case anything terrible happens. Okay. I lay down, reach into my pack, and I place the Eye of Saw on my chest. Constitution save. 13. He lays down, he puts it on his chest, <laughs> and then just slumps. <laughs> Zion, you are in where you were, but you are now inside the astral realm. You are seeing them all around you in their astral forms. Para is a glowing column of fire. 
Doro has this weird glowing beard and a staff and looks like he's ancient. Rena is like, she's standing there and then there's a dagger in her back and then there's not. And then there's a pile of gold in her hands. And there's not like good and bad luck is constantly flashing around her. Oinkers is just this glowing shard hanging in the middle of the air. And Torvik is drunk and passed out and a bunch of animals running over him. Or it's just a ton of cats sleeping on yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> I am going to, with my mind, rise myself out of this shack and over the city. The whole city is laid out before you, and there's little twinkling lights everywhere, and the mountains are there, and the ocean is there, this rolling pink and purple ocean. And then there's a shadow as this huge jellyfish, multicolored jellyfish, just rolls over top of you. And then you see a second one kind of roll in the same direction and this brilliant blast of light cuts through the sky from somewhere just past the horizon and slices one of these creatures in half as it screams and two more descend on where that beam came from. What? (laughs) All of us. Well, I don't want to get Uh... sliced. But are you saying that there's like a... Astral jellyfishes are being blasted from beyond. Something on the ground just outside your vision or someone blasted a beam of energy straight up into the air that cut one of these jellyfish creatures in half and other ones are starting to converge on that area. I am going to astrally converge upon that area. As you're flying towards there, you can now, like, you're kind of, like, rising up a little bit, like, over this hill. And you see an old dwarf kind of standing her ground. She's forming a shield of astral energy with one hand. She's firing beams of energy with the other hand. But four more jellyfish are closing in. Initiative. Twelve. She goes at 17. The astral raiders go at nine. And I'm going to open up the God's Fall World book to get the stats on these guys real quick. Placement. Plug. I was just about to say, yeah. Plug, plug. <laughs> One of them comes swooping down towards her. It flies down head first, and at the last second swings back upwards, so its tentacles slam down towards her, and two of them strike. <laughs> an invisible barrier that she has erected around her. There's this huge crackling of pink and purple energy and the thing kind of leaps off like it's been shocked hovering around the top as the other ones are descending around her. I was just about to roll a perception to see if his body is physically reacting while he's in this astral plane. You only need to roll perception because you're right there standing next, next to him. It's like if someone was in deep REM asleep. So here, there's maybe an involuntary twitch once in a while, but mainly his eyes are closed and you can see his eyes fluttering wildly underneath them. Like, let's say he got hurt in the astral plane. Would his sleeping body react at all or no? You guys have never seen it happen, so you don't know. Okay. Okay, so how many jellyfish are there? Four. One is currently being engaged on that shield wall that the uh, dwarf had put up. Yes. three more are descending. Okay, and then the size of a bus, but I don't really know how my powers work in the astral plane. Well, at least for one round, before shit gets too hairy, I'm going to give it a try because I'm here. So I reach out with my divinity, and I send out a force bolt into one of those jellyfish. I would like you to roll a d20 and add your divinity modifier to it. 19. A crackling lance of energy comes out of you. It's the same, but different. Force is made out of a slightly different energy. So instead of kind of this ruby, darker red and purple, it's now this bright, brilliant pink that fires out of you. You strike one of the creatures dead in the side. So 16. And there's this weird screaming kind of warble that comes out from it as its whole body shifts and bright energy and light kind of flashes over across its body. And it turns, you guess, to face you, and another one of them peels off too and start coming towards you. They'll be at you at the next round. The other two have now descended. They're swiping at the shield. It's like... They're kind of bouncing off it. She looks a little weakened, and she takes a blast at one of them. 
and it cuts through the side of one, so this big, huge hole blasts out in it, and it kind of spirals and almost falls to the ground, and it's kind of flapping around, and its arms are flailing. I will rocket myself back toward my body. Everyone, I need your help. Pear kneels down. Oinkers, you stand guard over our body. <laughs> Everybody lay down. We, uh, we all lay down. I lay down. I lay down. Uh, I lay down. Everybody place your hand on mine. And we lay back and form this four-part circle of people with uh, my hand in the center. Like the spokes of a wheel, right? Yeah. Place the eye of saw onto the center hand. So all of you, boom, are suddenly lying on the floor of this shack in the Astroram. Everything's made out of this pink and purple energy. Slightly disoriented because of the change for a second. And then you all see a bright, brilliant beam of energy fly up from somewhere just beyond the horizon. Everyone rise. We have to make this right. We have to help her. As you think that, you can easily lift. And you couldn't do this in the real world, but you could lift all of them here. You could carry everyone over there. Oh, why can't they just carry themselves? Because you have the power to fly. They can't fly. Only your power made you fly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just thought it was my, my <laughs> superior mind. No, he keeps picturing this like out of body experience yeah. type of thing. Oh, you know, yeah, in a dream how, world where you like exper- fly thinking, over yeah. a city or something. He's using his powers. Gotcha. Well, fine. Then I reach out with my freaking divinity, <laughs> <laughs> Gra- clasp everyone, and fly towards this problem. Okay, so this is a real weird feeling for the rest of you because, like, there's just this, like, invisible energy that forms around you and all of you lift off the ground at the same time. (laughs) And you're now all flying. And as you get over to this area, you see two giant jellyfish have descended on this old dwarf and she's now on her knees and she's holding some sort of shield up around her and it's flickering and fading as the two have enveloped it in their tentacles and two more are descending on it. Initiative. Ooh, nat 20. Oh, the jellyfish rolled a natural 20. Ooh. I rolled a nat 20. Did you really? Yeah. Okay, what are your dexterities? Uh, I have plus three. My dexterity's plus one. Okay, so it's going to be her jellyfish para. Okay, first to act, Rena. So I'm floating above, and I'm shooting for one of the ones that's on top of the, um, the lady. Okay, so you don't have a bow. None of you have any of your weapons, but as soon as you think about shooting, a pink and purple energy bow simply appears in your hand and your quiver appears on your back. Can it fire an arrow? I'm going to go to the ones on her shield. It's a 29 to hit. Yeah, that's going to hit. <laughs> it's a big jellyfish, you know. Roll damage. Seven. Your arrow is released from your bow and forms like a tra- like a spinning trail of sparks as it fires across the horizon and sinks deep into this jellyfish and then just kind of vanishes but leaves a hole behind it. I get to twack again. And I get a 20-whatever, so that's going to hit. Six. One arrow disappears into it, causes a hole. Another arrow disappears into it, causes a hole. It wobbles with the second one, There's like a weird guttural cry from inside it that warbles its skin and ripples it, and it comes darting towards you. Another one peels off and starts coming towards your group. The other two continue to attack her shield. Finally, there's like this shattering of energy as the shield collapses and they descend upon her. Are we still floating in the air? Yeah, we're flying. We're still floating. Okay. We are flying so like, through the air. Can I, I can't control where I move though, right? I would like you to roll a wisdom save. 18 plus whatever I have for wisdom. There's a residual connection of the bridge, not the full bridge, but it's like you're constantly connected by this tiny thread and when you think I want to move, you kind of feel Zion understanding you in that moment. Is it okay if he moves, Zion? Yeah, of course. You can now direct yourself. How many jellyfish are closing in on her? 
On the dwarf? On the dwarf, yeah. Two. She's, she's basically on her knees now with her arms trembling above her. And how big are these jellyfish? The size of a bus. Oh, shit. Okay, cool. Awesome. See, but here's the thing about the divinity. A lot of his come from the sun, and we're in the astral. There's an astral sun. Oh, okay. There's an astral sun. Oh, cool. You know, all I was picturing the entire time was like one of those like grid worlds from like the 80s, you know, like I was just picturing like a grid world the entire time. Like I'm kind of like a ghost, like floating around in it. Para Superman style zooms down like behind the two jellyfish closing in on her and casts a solar flare on him. Since they're descending, you could have it like above them. So it just hits them and not her. You could do that. Uh, DC is 14. Yeah, they both failed. 4d6. 3, 1, 3, 2. 9 total. The other jellyfish is coming this way, and you kind of spiral around it, and then just open your arms, and there's a brilliant explosion of light right above the jellyfish, and it knocks them off her and slams them into the ground on either side, and they're screaming and rolling on the ground. Uh, so all I can do is position people. So I'm going to teleport to... Or get her out, right? The old woman, and then, I guess, attempt to teleport her out? Yeah, if, if you use your full movement uh, and yeah. all your actions, you could you, you could do that. And it's incredibly simple. You can see her, so there's no... And it's actually very easy to move through the astral realm. So this is easy. You Doro vanishes from where he is, appears right behind the woman. Where do you go? We have, like, a a point where our bodies are, right? Yeah, you could go back to the docks. Oh, because this is all... Where... Can I just ask you real quick where this is taking place in the world? I know it's astral, but, oh, like... yeah, yeah, Theoretically, where is this? So, roughly where you guys were uh, first doing your shopping, that's where she is right now. I want to move her back to our bodies. Doro vanishes from floating in the air, appears down next to the woman, puts his hands on her shoulder, and vanishes again. And then you appear on the docks. I will yell out, Withdraw! And I will then use the, my divinity to uh, pull people with me back toward our bodies. So you all feel a firm tug on your back to return to your bodies. Do you allow that to happen? Yes. Yes. But can I do a perception before I get sucked in? And I'm still looking forward in this city right now. So I kind of want to, like, take it in to see if I see anything. So, 15. They all just kind of wink out of existence all around you. So, boom, boom, boom. Everyone's oh. gone. You're the last one left for a second. The four jellyfish are converging on you. You're trying to really quickly look around. And just past one of the jellyfish, for a second, you see another person. And then the jellyfish close in around it, and you can't see past them. And they're going to be on top of you within a second. I like close my eyes and let go to allow myself to be sucked back. Boom. You're all back in the shack and there is a old dwarf there as well. I carefully placed the eye of saw back into my pack. I'm so sorry about that, ma'am. Uh, what, what's your name? Dudala. Becky. And she stands up and she has a tiny little staff that she kind of pulls out of her a cloak and she places it down in front of her and she has her hands gently resting on it and she's just looking forward in your guys' general direction. Thank you. Thank you for the near rescue and then the actual rescue. Yeah, we're sorry about that. That is all right, child. We are all distracted. We all have much to worry about. In the times ahead. What? <laughs> Wait, why do you say that? Luck. Force. Travel. The sun. You're the most worrying. I believe th beasts. And then, oh. And she kind of leans down and puts a hand out towards Oinkers. And Oinkers kind of walks over and she pets Oinkers for a second. Lovely. <laughs> now. Why were you seeking me? So she can see us. She seems aware of you. She can see our astral. But she can't see anything in the room? Or does she see what the astral... Is her sight daredevil? Or, you know, like, what is it? 
she definitely seems blind. Like she's not directly staring at any of you, but she gestured in your general directions and she seems somehow aware of you. She has this staff and as she moves around, she leads with it almost as if she's checking her direction, but she's also not moving around much. Okay. So Dudala, uh, we came to seek you out because we need your help. What is it that you're seeking, young man? We seek the survival of the world itself. That is quite a noble goal, and a very large one. Many forces threaten the world at this moment. Yes, yeah, some were threatening you just a few moments ago. The Kadarians have come before. This is the first time they have taken me. I was surprised as well, but I'm not the one that stirred them up. Para is uh, helping her uh, have a seat. Because she does look tired, so Para's kind of like just leading her to a chair that Steelbeard just like makes and forms at, like right under her. Patting your arm. Well, thank no, you, young man. No, what, no what a kind and generous show. Could I, could I by chance have a water? Oh, yeah, a- absolutely, absolutely. Like walks over to the sink. By the time you reach for it, there's a wooden cup hanging off the basin. I'll just hand it to her. Thank you, my dear. Dudala, do you have any deep affinity for this place, or would you mind if we set off now? Set off? There are people searching for you right now. You wish me to come with you? Or if we could take you somewhere else that you would prefer. No, that's fine. I suppose I could just leave everything behind. I can make more plates. I can make another stall. And there are far more important things to worry about. Steelbeard. Um... Let's all step outside. Transform! <laughs> You're the best. Nothing's gonna ever keep you down. You're the best around. Nothing's gonna ever keep you down. I, I want to uh, go to uh, Rena on the side and say, uh, and tell her what I saw in the astral plane. Right before I was sucked out, there was... There was this glowing, glowing light. I don't know exactly where it was, but it was close to her shop. Did you see anything about it? No, everything was too fast. I got sucked out too, too quickly, but there's something else there. Did it glow with, like, a god power? Or, like... It definitely felt divine. That means there's somebody else here. That's what I'm thinking. Can't leave them here. Well, unless they're bad, then we can definitely leave them there. The dock has now just started to move away from the shore and Steelbeard is beginning to form. And as Steelbeard is forming, a fog is rolling out from him to cover the transformation. Paris starts getting kind of worried, like, uh, because he wants to get to safety This is what we came here to do. But at the same time, there's something else there. Maybe he should bring it to the group. And as this is all, the ship is forming. He's like, I saw something. What? What? I saw something in the astral plane. Um, There was a glowing glowing light. It was definitely someone, uh, another divinity. Nearby? Near her shop, yes. Dudala, do you know anything about this? Were those jelly things or whatever it was another entity like us? Those creatures are from the astral realm. You could call them guardians. Think of wolves around a den. They clear out what does not belong. Why would they try to clear you out? Shouldn't you belong? I am the god of this world, but I am not from it. They do not like interlopers. Uh Uh-oh, she's evil. She's totally evil. (laughs) The only thing he didn't do was steeple his fingers. (laughs) Why do you think she's evil? She's giving you all She said interlopers in a British accent. That's Exactly. (laughs) Bad guy. Don't you see all the skulls on her uniform? (laughs) Stab. (laughs) And the eye patch. (laughs) (laughs) So as we're taking off on our little ship here, it's now fully formed around you, and then there's like this fog covering you every everywhere. You can't see five feet past the boat. You assume you're going in the right direction. Dudala, where do you come from? From Rizon. I have spent my 273 years in this city. I used to work the mines. Back when the mines were deep underground, before the vein of gold exploded to the surface during the last God's War. I was in a tunnel. We were trapped underneath there. There was a dozen of us. Only I survived. I found 
my powers there the first time, a flickering, fading moment of them. I remember stepping outside of myself and rising through the rocks as if I were nothing. I thought I was dead. I thought my soul was ascending. And then I simply woke up on the ground as the world burned around me. I didn't have my powers again for a while. For a long time I thought it was a dream or perhaps I was losing my mind. They came to me again and I've had them ever since. Can we just talk about a 173 year old woman working the mines? She's 273 now, but 100 years ago, she was 173 years old working the mine. She, she was like, I gotta stay busy. Dwarves live until like 450, right? So, so yeah, I mean, she'd be like... She'd be in her 40s. She's working toward retirement, you know, yeah, slowly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, <laughs> she wished she would have saved up more. Yeah, <laughs> She's not from the upper caste. Her house is She's low. She's like three yeah. years right before retirement. <laughs> I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> have you come across any of the other awakened before? I have sensed them. Several have transgressed into the realm. I can sense when they enter. I can sometimes sense when they pull from it. But I have not seen another one in person. Not until now. Caitlin walks over to Doro and she's like, Doro, who is this? Uh, this is Dudala. She's the, uh, the astral godling. The godling of the astral? Okay, so the boat has formed. You all are within an inner cabin with, like, a porthole there because you were all kind of seated in, in a room, so Steelbeard kind of formed a room around you. Para is still looking out uh, at the market. Roll a perception. Eleven. Nah, you don't see anything. You're they're looking and looking, and you just can't see anything as the fog closes in over the porthole. Can I look too? Because like I'm with Para. Like when he was like talking to me about it, and he was uh, like, "You just, I mean, you see a lot of things. You see boats. You see a couple of the Kadarian ships pushing off, and then again, the fog closes over the porthole." Uh, so as Para's like looking out, scanning uh, people and places, wondering like where is that person? He's also thinking of the K- Kadarian army searching for this person, and he's just kind of worried as he looks out there. Thank you for joining us for episode 69, The God of the Astral Realm. For my DM's notes on this and other adventures, head on over to Patreon and support God's Fall. We've got unedited episodes posted, as well as early releases of future episodes for all of our backers. And if you haven't picked up a God's Fall world book yet, you still have time to get a print copy. Check out worldbook.godsfall.com and reserve yours today. For more updates and information about the podcast, follow us on Twitter at God's Fall DC and our podcasting collective at Neon Rivals. We are currently exploring the jungles of Chult as we run through the Tomb of Annihilation. For full episodes, check out NeonRival.com and we'll see you next time for more adventures in the Five Kingdoms.